well, the, the last but allegedly not least, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> I'm here with my sister and colleagues with whom I began graduate school a few decades ago, uh, as well as people like Carol Anderson, with whom we flew from Atlanta to DC last night. It was a really quite a pleasure sitting next to each other and, and on that flight. So our test, I don't think I've got a full, fully answered all of the prompts, but um, I'm gonna talk about what I'd like to see in the future. I'm honored to be here with you and to be inducted into the AAPSS. So I would like to see a better balance of quantitative and qualitative methodological analysis um, in the social sciences in general and in political science in particular. The next generation of, sh of scholars should be introduced to the concept that empirical evidence and information gathered by statistical methods, while important, need to be understood within their social and cultural context. And the, some of the presentations we've already heard today, Jennifer, thank you, uh, as well as some of the others, are already there. So I'm, I'm delighted to be with people in an organization that understands the complexity of the work that we do. Social policy and public policy have to be developed using a variety of methods. If only, if only mathematical methods are employed or are used in isolation, there's a lot missed and much is unlikely to be fully understood. We've encountered in recent decades uh, dramatic shifts in public life, uh, which include completely unexpected developments. Some examples include presidential election results, developments in the legislative branch, which of course are unfolding as we speak. I don't know what's happened on the Hill at the moment, but I'm sure maybe Thomas will be uh, killed by now, I don't know. And major events in international affairs. That kill point is in reference to Trump saying he eliminated uh, Emmer last evening. Um, in the 21st century, presidential candidates began to be elected who seemed based on political science's theoretical, theoretical understanding completely outside the realm of possibility. Barack Obama's election in 2008 uh, and re-election in 2012, and you know, before, in the, I remember in the fall before the 2008 election, how a group of, of scholars gathered uh, in Philadelphia and said, oh, maybe he is going to be elected, but it was an astonishing Re 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 recognition that that was possible. Um, Barack Obama's election in 2008, re-election in 2012, Donald Trump's election in 2016 are some examples of this. This is followed by volatile developments in the growth of the Tea Party um, and the dynamic volatility of the Tea Party and the underlying importance of race in, in its growth and in Trump's election to office was missing, I think, from political science. Um, there was a tendency to explain the hostile reactions to Obama's presidency by economic tensions among whites, rather than fully recognizing the importance of race and racial hostility. Um, in international affairs, the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, the disintegration of the Soviet Union in 1981, are additional examples um, that were totally unpredictable by scholars in these fields. They were astonished when they happened. And literally, some were kind of out of work, trying to figure out what they were gonna do next. Socioeconomic theories about public opinion, voting, and those most likely to be able to shape the political environment were undergirded by the importance of education and socioeconomic status. Given that assumed pattern, as the decades after World War II unfolded, the civil rights movement and some political processes should not have happened. Um, African Americans with very low levels of education had little or no capacity, according to social science theory, um, to, for political mobilization and the capacity for social change and to lead that capacity. So I'd like to see the joining of these analytical strategies that is qualitative and quantitative in developing the next generation of social scientists with a goal of creating more complex strategies for research methods and intellectual thought. Most political science programs, for example, begin introductory graduate education with quantitative methods, uh, sequences, usually in complete 
isolation from historical context, from racial and ethnic identities, uh, from cultural understandings and other types of qualitative research. Now, some departments are beginning to have um, um, qualitative methods, race, ethnic, race, ethnicity, and politics fields like UCLA's, um, but most do not integrate those into the, the method sequences in those early years, and I guess I'm giving myself an idea for something for me to do. <laughs> um, the types of research conducted in the past, and I'm shifting a little bit, the types of research conducted in the past by scholars who've already been mentioned by W.E.B. Du Bois, but also by one of the most important political scientists, Ralph Bunch, and by another political scientist who's really come to knowledge in poli-sci recently, Maurice Tate, uh, laid important foundations for understanding racial and ethnic politics within the U.S., but also outside of the U.S. in international relations. Their work by Du Bois, Bunch, and, and Tate has until re very recently remained unrecognized and largely unacknowledged. Contemporary scholars have begun to push forward our understanding of the work of these brilliant scholars and their approaches. Examples of these uh, scholars who are focusing on the three include Alden Morris, the author of The Scholar Denied, W.E.B. Du Bois and the Birth of Modern Sociology, published in 2017 that won um, awards at the American Sociological Association. Krista Johnson on the Howard School of International Relations. She's a faculty member at Howard and is working on the Howard School of International Relations. Our board chair, um, Paula McLean, has Paula and I and several other people were on a panel at the APSA this fall talking about these issues. Pearl Robinson's developing scholarly biography on Ralph Bunch and Barbara Savage's just published biography of Merce Tate, uh, Merce Tate, The Global Odyssey of a Black Woman Scholar, published in just this past fall. Uh, I shouldn't say this fall. I should say last week. Um, and so Tate is... Um, profoundly important in international relations, but the field is just beginning to recognize her and to understand what she contributed. So these are examples of scholarly work on which we might focus in coming decades that would strengthen, enrich, and deepen our understanding of social and public policies. And I commend that to my occasion of my um, induction into the academy. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we are short on time, um, but not on insights and um, intellectual uh, thought. Uh, but I'd like to invite uh, Mary Waters and then Paula McLean to give their responses to what they heard uh, from the incoming fellows. So you thought your assignment was bad, your prelim question. Try to summarize.